the UK's leading muscle therapy and recovery tools are now supporting the channel. More on Pulse Roll later. So hi everyone, welcome back. Now like I said, I'm out to benchmark the Sugai Axo Spider Base Power Meter. Now I say benchmark because I'm gonna test them against the Favero Asioma Shimano pedals that I used in the last video against the Quark Power Meter. Now I'm not saying either one is right or wrong, but I found the pedals to match the Quark really 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 well in all kind of riding positions so more steady state efforts intervals climbing intervals and also kind of peak power sprints so because they're basically the only thing i can attach to this to compare it um, i'm going to use the same now it would be a very good kind of direct comparison between the sugai and the quark because they're both spider based power meters and benchmarking them against the asiomas now how does it work well it's a spider based power meter very similar to a quark design or a power 2 max it's basically a disc that goes into torsion. The strain, or the shear strain is measured by the strain gauges. I think it's a two arm design like the Power 2 Max. And in total, we'll get into the data in a minute, but in total, um, it's reporting very, very similar to the pedals, which obviously reported very, very similar to the cork. So I think I've done a very good job. Need to say just briefly, I'm not gonna go into it too much in this video, but pairing to the app, pairing to head units, both amp plus, and Bluetooth is absolutely flawless on this. Not had any single problems with software. It's never dropped out. Uh, pairing is really quick. The app's very easy to use and there's not too many kind of bloat features on the app, so that's really good. It's charged, five watts, uh, small contact charger, magnetic charger, it's got onboard battery. Now that's good for like hermetic sealing, but if that cell goes bad, the whole power meter goes down, but it should be okay. You don't really need to worry about charge and discharge cycles, uh, basically just like the pedals. You charge them so little, you're never going to really have an impact with the life through charging cycles. Anyway, before we get into the data, the data is very close. Uh, just a brief spoiler, the power meter reads slightly high when you're in the big chain ring. And I've reported that back to Sugai and we'll see what they say about that. But I think the calibration procedure may be slightly different. Um, I don't know if they're doing a dynamic or a static cow with this. Like I know with the higher end Power 2 Max power meters like the NG, um, they're doing a dynamic cal on both chain rings on a rotary machine and all the torque their reference power meter is like a coaxial inline power meter or a torque sensor i'm not sure how sugai do it but um, apart from that we're looking at one and a half two percent um, sometimes when the chain is in the big chain ring now that could be the calibration procedure it could also be that when i'm in the big chain ring um, if i'm at the smaller cogs at the back there's a bit of bending to the chain ring that's adding a bit more strain on the strain gauges which aren't being cancelled and that should be cancelled by the gauge layout but in total it's pretty damn good for the money now Sugai make power meters for basically so many different cranks they've probably got the widest range of crank fittings along with power 2 max out of any power meter now i've obviously got them on the 24 millimeter rotor aldus and you probably saw a brief glimpse of this power meter on the rotor aldu video which i did the Rota Aldu steel 24mm axle is probably the only good thing you can put inside a Shimano BB now. Um, and I've gone away from Shimano cranks completely because I wanted a power meter obviously on the Shimano crank bottom bracket. Can't get a GXP quark anymore, so this is kind of your only option or a Power 2 Max. So yeah, let's get a look into the data. Cycling, driving and sitting down at work are all pretty bad postures that humans aren't really designed for. So I'm pleased that Pulse Roll are now supporting the channel. They're the UK's leading vibrational muscle therapy supplier to some big, big names such as Anthony Joshua, British Rowing, UAE Team Emirates, and now the most prominent of them all, the Peak Talk YouTube channel. I'm all for efficiency, so getting some of the benefits of a sports massage and myofacial release whilst traveling or resting is a real time saver. You can use the link down below and with code PEAKTALK you will get a 15% discount. And if you use the link, it helps out the channel a bit too. But you've got to use that link or I'll send Anthony Joshua around to punch you in the face. I'm currently using the mini massage gun, ball and roller, great tools for the tight QLs, hips and quads that cyclists usually suffer from. Charging is really up to date with a simple USB-C, so getting that head stuck into those tight spots becomes pretty addictive. Okay, so let's get into the data from the Sugoi because the range of fitments that they offer and the price is quite impressive, but do the numbers stack up? So we're going to compare the Sugai to the Faveros like I did in the last Favero video where I compared that against the Quark. We're going to use the same kind of interval structure that I did, not using a turbo trainer because I believe you need to test these things outdoors with the vibrations and the parasitic bending loads that are applied outdoors. Straight off the bat we can see in this interval 311 for the Favero, 311 for the Sugai, so 
power almost identical this is a seated climbing interval of about three minutes three to four minutes in a small chain ring and i'll put that because it gets interesting in a minute same climb same interval slightly higher power in the big chain ring 350 versus 358 so there's a difference there of about 2.3 percent higher reading from the sugai i'm not going to call it an error at this stage because we still don't know which one is right and which one is wrong but i thought hmm same climb same kind of time same kind of distance let's try again so back to the small chain ring for another lap and again they almost read identical in the small chain ring 318 versus 320 almost zero difference we'll call that so back to the big chain ring again see if there's that error still present and we can see yes we've got a 2.2 percent difference the sugai i could tell even looking at the computer during the lap is reading high and if you do the calc yeah it's about 2.2 percent high so why is that and actually we'll come to that but i contacted sugai with all of this raw data and we looked at it together and actually they're very very open when it comes to the technical stuff and the calibration procedure and i was actually really impressed with how open they were doing the sprints like we did in the last video now it is hard for, to compare these max sprint powers because they are you know very transient events the garmin clips at one hertz so the max power that the garmin's going to clip is is always going to be different um, from each power meter so it's not a very good comparison but 40 watts in a thousand don't really look too much into that but the pattern remains the same another one again slightly higher power slightly shorter duration you know just kind of by chance the transients are picked up very similarly here there's only five watts in it um, in this plot so again very similar and just another one pretty similar again max power is very very similar so not really much to split them between the two if we go back to the longer effort i think the pedals pick up the force transients a bit better than spider-based power meters because the spider-based power meters doesn't really see those instantaneous force applications and there's a bit it's just a little bit more dilution from the chain tension and stuff rather than actually force detection right on the pedal spindle itself which is very direct but overall you know averages remain very similar now just looking at a quick lap summary of the overall ride so normalized power from the sugai 264 and 266 from the favero so if you look at like the normalized power of the overall ride which is how i tend to judge you know training effect of every training session very 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 similar can't really split much between the two the top lines um there is a lot of cadence difference on some of the downhill segments and we saw that with the quark and that just comes from angular velocity sensing and how the different companies do it it's not so important because you know downhill or coasting you don't really need to know your power it's not as if you're taking that as training data power averages are quite similar across the board except when we use those big chain ring efforts the sugai tends to read a bit high a very very kind of loose correlation between the cadence difference and power so if the cadence difference is high on those downhill and coasting efforts you tend to get a much larger power difference if the cadence difference is low like it is in the you know the proper intervals when you're pedaling most of the time then the power difference is very well you know is very low too so why do we see this tiny variation between the small and the big chain rings in terms of calibration well i put all this data and my predicted error to Sugai and we discussed it and actually they were really open and technically speaking one of the most open companies I've ever spoke to in cycling we discussed their calibration procedure they showed me the procedure it's a dynamic full dynamic calibration just like the best companies use like power to max which features an inline kind of coaxial load cell a reference load cell on a dynamic rig so everything is spinning and they've got you know the chain cassette chain rings cranks everything's spinning around so mimicking you know real world conditions now they said they can either calibrate for the small chain ring or for the large chain ring now at lower powers they said under 250 watts there is negligible difference between those two calibration values they said at powers over kind of 350 they do start to pick up a slight difference between small chain ring calibration and large chain ring calibration i think it's to do with how the torque is applied to the chain ring it's not pure you know it's not pure torsion it's not coaxial so now the chain applies torque to the spider tangentially almost tangentially that can be different between the small and the large chain rings and um, there could be different friction between the teeth and the chain links between the two chain rings the angle of the chain running back to the cassette could be different from both so if you're using the same cog at the back um, the angle of the chain is slightly different which will give you a slight bending out of plane of the chain ring which would add strain to the strain gauges which may not be cancelled and depending on the angle of the chain from you know a planar view if you've got a big chain ring and then a very small you're running the chain to a smaller cog on the back 
that chain is actually running slightly downhill which will add a slight compression vector to the chain ring. So if you look at the angle of the chain tension vector, if you split that into a kind of horizontal and vertical component, you'll actually get a slight vertical component on the large chain ring. So if you're in 5311, there's a slight compression downwards on the chain ring, which could add strain to the sensor, giving you a slightly higher apparent power. Now, are these errors big enough to not recommend the power meter? I think no. I think, you know, the build quality, the software quality of the app was really good. Um, the price is really good and the range of fitments that you can get this for is, is really good. So I do recommend this power meter. Anyway, cheers for coming and I hope you enjoyed that. Put any questions you've got down below and don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps the channel. Cheers and I'll see you in the next one.